quality, if you see the weightage, there were 30 marks were allocated to prelims in 2015. It means there was a 15 question because it, each question was two marks. In 2016, there was only six question, 12 marks. In 2017, there was 44 marks. It means 21 question was there in 2017. PT, prelims. In 2018, there was a 15 question. In 2019, there was 16 question. In 2020, there was a 17 question. In 2021, there was a 21 question. In 2022, there was a 13 question. What about 2023? How many questions we can expect? We can expect approximately 30 marks. You know, that means 15 questions in 2023 prelims. And to get the 30 marks, right? We need to study few chapters. Not all the chapters are necessary to study. There are few chapters, for example, historical background, preamble, selling features of the Indian constitution, fundamental rights, DPSP and fundamental duty, system of government, that is parliamentary system, parliament, Indian judiciary, panchayati Raj, MP lad, MLA lad fund, electoral reforms. One more that you can look at, you know, that is called schedule. Schedule of the constitution. Especially 10th schedule. That is anti-defection law. You can look at it and you can go for, you know, for the examination, you can attend. And if you do all these 10, approximately 10 chapter, 80 to 85 percent questions you can attempt in quality, right? So we are not, we, are, we can't expect 100 percent, of course, because 15 percent question, question comes from here and there, you can't track. But 80 to 85 percent questions you can track. And that 80 to 85 percent question comes from all these 10 to 11, 10 ch chapters. And we know that, you know, uh, you know that we are talking about parliament. We are on topic, uh, topic number six. We are talking about Indian parliament. So yesterday we talked about Indian Parliament. I defined what is Indian Parliament. Now today I'll talk about little more. I'll talk about little more about Indian Parliament. So if you look at Indian Parliament, if you look at our Indian Parliament, so. Here, I'm writing only parliament. Parliament has, you know, two house, that is Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. <clears throat> Rajya Sabha. And president is a very much integral part of the parliament. You must note that president is not a member of the parliament. However, the president is very much integral part of the parliament. Why president is very much integral part of the parliament? Because if a bill passed by both the house, Lok Sabha as well as Raj Sabha, the bill cannot become an assent without, you know, a bill cannot become an act without assent of the president. So president signature is very important, right? President can summon the parliament to sit. President can dissolve the Lok Sabha. You know, Raj Sabha is not subject to dissolve.
not subject to dissolve. So president can dissolve the Lok Sabha, right? The president addresses the first meeting in each financial year. The president addresses, you know, the first meeting of each new parliament, right? And you know, look at the importance of the president. So although the president is not a part of the parliament, not a member of the either house, not a member of the parliament, right? He is not member of the Lok Sabha. He is not member of the Rajya Sabha, but he is very much integral to the parliament, right? Very integral part of the parliament. Now come to the Lok Sabha. The maximum strength of the Lok Sabha can be five fifty. Maximum strength can be 550. What could be the maximum strength of the Rajya Sabha? Two fifty, not two forty-four. Two fifty. And if you look at, there are election on five forty-three. Election is held on. 543. Here election is held on 245. There are actual strength is 245. And out of 245, 233 are elected indirectly. By the state by the state assembly of different state. Now here the Lok Sabha member are directly elected by the people. directly elected by the people right so members are directly elected by people here members are directly elected indirectly elected by the state assembly now if you look at their election is based on aptp Election is based on election is based on APTP. Now in the Rajya Sabha, election is based on proportional representation. proportional representation by the means of single transferable vote. To look at, you know, the voting system. Voting system, the electoral law for the Raj Sabha is very much different. It's called in a very short, it is called PRSTB. Proportional representation by the means of single transferable. Here you have a PTP. Right? Now, if you look at, you know, if I ask you that from where this member of the Lok Sabha is elected, so they are elected from the called electoral constituency. You know what is electoral constituency? What is electoral constituency? Basically, each state, right, has been divided in an electoral constituency. So, for example, there is a one state called this is a state, and this state is divided on the basis of 
um, you know, this divided as an electoral constituency. Right. A, anything can be the same. And this electoral constituency is based on population. This electoral constituency is based on population. Right. Who draws this electoral constituency? Basically, it is drawn by delimitation commission. It is drawn by delimitation commission. Now, what is delimitation commission? Basically, delimitation commission is a statutory body. Delimitation commission is a statutory body. What does it mean by statutory body? Delimitation commission was established by the act of the parliament. Right. And they draw and redraws council of uh, electoral constituency. If you look at this delimitation commission, draws boundary for general election and they draws also boundary for state election. They draws boundary for state election and general election. How you know what is the principle? The principle they draws boundary electoral boundaries on the basis of uniformity. You know what is the uniformity? That you know each constituency should be the same in terms of population. Each constituency should be so there is no issue of territory. There is an issue of population. There may be this constituency, this constituency, that constituency, right? So each each state is divided in a such a way that there is a uniformity, right? Now, when the first delimitation commission was formed, if you look at the first delimitation commission. Let me know from you that when the first election was conducted in India, the first election was conducted in 1951 to 1952. If you look at first election, in independent India, when is the first election conducted in the independent India, it was November 1951 to February 1952, the four month. In this four month, right, people have elected their member of parliament and also the member of state legislative assembly. So if you look at before election, there was electoral there was electoral constituency who did drew it a delimitation commission so parliament passed you know delimitation commission act 1951 parliament passed delimitation Commission Act 1951 and this Delimitation Commission Act, you know, 
created the Limitation Commission 1951. Right? This limit, the Limitation Commission created electoral constituency throughout India, throughout India, and first general election was conducted, right? Now, if you look at, this was the first delimitation commission, and first time electoral constituency was created. First electoral constituency was created first time in 1951. Right? So that first time delimitation commission, now who was the member of the delimitation commission? There are, especially there are three members, the chief election commissioner, chief election commissioner, one more election commissioner and the CGI, the chief justice of India could be the member or the any senior more judges can be the member of the delimitation commission. But if you look at, you know, now, so for now, second delimitation commission, I'm writing now DC. Second delimitation commission was formed in 1961, right? Because the constitution says that after each census, after each census, there will be readjustment in electoral constituency based on population. Now, look at you know that. The census is held after each 10 years, right? After a decade, decade. So after a decade, you know, the second delimitation commission was formed in 1961. Now, third delimitation commission was formed in 1971, right? Third delimitation commission was formed in 90, created was 1971, and which created again electoral constituency throughout India, throughout India, right? So this, you know, Deliberation Commission created electoral constituency for the parliament throughout India. Now, one more thing happened, you know, the 42nd Amendment Act. The 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act 1976. You know, this 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act 1946, 76, not 46, sorry. I'm just sorry. Second Constitutional, uh, 42nd CAA Constitutional Amendment Act 1976, frozen. Frozen the seats, seat of parliament. On the basis of on the basis of nineteen seventy one census, right? For the for twenty five years. Now the next 25 years, seats were frozen on the basis of 1971. Oh, 76, sorry. Yeah, on the basis of 1971 census and it was done in 1976. Now look at 1976. If you add 25 years in 1976, it becomes 2001. It becomes 2001. Now look at, in 2001, right, in 2000, right, one, the 84th, 84th CAA further, you know, further frozen the seat of the parliament, seats of Parliament 
on the basis of nineteen seventy one census on the basis of nineteen seventy seven for the next twenty five years. That means total fifty years, total fifty years seats has been frozen for the parliament. Now, if I add 25 years here, then it will become 2026. It means, it means till 2026, no, the seats, seats of parliament is frozen. Seats of, so seats in the parliament, in parliament is frozen on the basis of 1971 census. Now in 2026, there will be decision, there will be decision that what course of action should be taken, should parliamentary strength can be increased or should we again pass a constitutional amendment act and again further you know continue this this seat depends on the parliament but i hope you know the parliament <coughs> will expand the mps in the parliament right mps right there is also debate Right, if you look at the southern state, the population rise in southern state is very much, you know, moderate, not so significant as the state of north, like UP, Bihar, population is the growth in UP, Bihar are, and other northern states are very high. But if you to talk, talk about southern state, they have actually uh, planned carefully the family planning. Right, and there is no such increase of population in southern state. So, if you know, and you all know that representation is based on population, the electoral constituency is based on population. And you know, if considered, you know, the parliament says, parliament seats is fixed on the basis of 2021 census. Abhi tak census nahi hua hai, ho jayega. Right, 2021 census. To kya hoga? Southern state will have more number of MPs than the, no, the Northern state will have more MPs, right? Northern states like UP and Bihar will have you know significant significant number of MPs in the past MPs ka number bahut jada hoga because population jada hai Population increase jada hua hai. Right? So that is the one thing. Now, if you look at Delimitation Commission, Delimitation Commission is in news. Why they are in news? Because if you look at, you know, the Jammu and Kashmir has been declared as a UT and a special status has been withdrawn. <clears throat> so there are UT like Jammu and Kashmir is a UT, Ladakh is a UT. Now in Jammu and Kashmir, there has, there has not been election after this 
you know, abolition of special status. And there shall be election. And the Delimitation Commission was formed. Delimitation Commission was formed to redraw and draw the boundary of the Jammu and Kashmir. And Rajana Desai, the former justice in the Supreme Court, Rajana Desai basically is heading the Delimitation Commission. Right? So that is very important. Now come to the, you know, the offices. Come to again Parliament. We have talked about the Delimitation Commission. Let me talk about again Lok Sabha and Rashtra Sabha. President. Now look at Lok Sabha, Raj Sabha and President. Look, who is it, you know, if you look at, if you want to become a Lok Sabha member, then your minimum age should be 25 years. But if you want to become a Raj Sabha member, your minimum age should be 30 and above. Right? Then you should be, one should be citizen of India and to become a member of the parliament. Non-citizen cannot become a member of the parliament then you know one should take oath and affirmation to follow and upheld the constitution of india right and one should abide by the law made by the parliament right so member of the parliament should be you know follow should follow the law right law of the land and who chairs the Lok Sabha? If you look at offices in the Lok Sabha, then first office is a speaker. The first office in the speaker. If I talk about Rajya Sabha, the first is called ex officio. Chairperson. Ex officio chairperson actually heads Rajya Sabha. And who is ex officio chairperson? Basically, often, you know, vice president. Vice president of India is the ex officio chairperson. of the Rajya Sabha. Now look at who is the ex officio chairperson, the vice president. Let me tell you, the vice president is not a member of the Rajya Sabha. So here you can see the ex officio chairperson is not a member of the Rajya Sabha. The ex officio chairperson is a not a member of that horse. But he is a chairperson. He is not a member of that house, but he is a, or she is a chairperson. Jagdeep Dhankar currently holding this position in the parliament. Now, second is deputy speaker. Deputy Speaker. Now again here you can see here there is a Deputy Speaker. And Deputy Speaker is elected by the member of that house. For example, Deputy Speaker in the Lok Sabha is elected, elected by the Lok Sabha members, amongst the members. And deputy speaker in the Rajya Sabha are elected one from the amongst the members. 
that is the second office third is you know it's called panel of vice chairperson panel of chairperson panel of chair person now there is a and in the here it is a panel of vice chairperson because panel of chairperson is already exceptional now each if you look at it, there are 10 members are chosen by the chairperson in the panel a speaker chooses 10 person 10 mp as a panel of chairperson what is the job of this panel of chairperson the job of the panel of chairperson you know is when the speaker is not present deputy speaker is not present then in that circumstances in that case any member of from the panel of chairperson can chair can sit can preside the meeting the meeting hoti hai parliament mein aur us waqt speaker na ho to deputy speaker preside karta hai deputy speaker chair karte hain usko agar deputy speaker na ho us case mein kaun karta hai us case mein karta hai any member from panel of chair person iska bhi wahi hal hai ki agar ex officio na ho deputy speaker na ho koi bhi ek person usko chair kar sakte hain now fourth jo officer hota hai लोक सभा में और राज्यसभा दोनों में यहां पर भी फोर्थ कैटेगरी ऑफिसर होता है इसको बोलते हैं यू नो सेक्रेटरी सेक्रेटरी और सेक्रेटरी का काम क्या होता है हर हाउस में एक सेक्रेटरी होता है हेडेड बाय सेक्रेटरी जनरल जनरल इनका काम होता है टू एड नो द स्पीकर इनका काम होता है जो भी प्रिसाइड करेगा मीटिंग को उसको हेल्प करना होता है तो देर आर फोर फोर ऑफिसर नाउ लेट मी कंपेयर लोकसभा एंड राज्यसभा लुक एट द पार्लियामेंट first so before i go to the comparing of lok sabha and rajya sabha let me talk about a speaker let me talk about speaker now who is a speaker a speaker is elected amongst member of the lok sabha rajya sabha member cannot become a speaker so speaker is it can be elected from member itself member of the lok sabha itself now if you look at president you know president keeps a date for election president keeps a date for election for प्रेसिडेंट डेट एक डेट फिक्स करता है स्पीकर को इलेक्ट करने के लिए जनरली कब होता है मैं बता देता हूं मान लो कि न्यू इलेक्शन हुआ 2019 में इलेक्शन हुआ न्यू पार्लियामेंट आया एक नई पार्लियामेंट बनी 2019 में राइट right. अब क्या करता है कि प्रेसिडेंट क्या करता है 
प्रोसीडेंट पहले एक प्रोक्टे में स्पीकर चुनता है प्रोक्टे में स्पीकर होता है दैट इज कॉल्ड टेम्पररी स्पीकर एक दिन के लिए पहले दिन के लिए ऑन द वेरी फर्स्ट डे राइट प्रोसीडेंट अपॉइंट प्रोटेम स्पीकर अब प्रोटेम स्पीकर क्या करता है प्रोटेम स्पीकर यू नो प्रिसाइड द फर्स्ट मीटिंग द वेरी फर्स्ट मीटिंग ऑफ द पार्लियामेंट एंड ही इज ऑल्सो एडमिनिस्टर द एंटायर इलेक्शन प्रोसेस ऑफ द स्पीकर बिकॉज द स्पीकर फिक्स द सेम डेट फॉर द इलेक्शन ऑफ द स्पीकर एंड ही ऑल्सो एडमिनिस्टर द ओथ and secrecy of office for the speaker right and when a speaker is elected protem speaker resigns protem speaker apne aap khatam ho jata hai apne aap dissolve ho jata hai now speaker is become powerful right and generally if you look at protem speaker generally the senior most member of the lok sabha appointed as a pro tem speaker but this is tradition not the rules this is tradition right now let me talk about so once a speaker is elected right a speaker is very much very much powerful now let me talk about the power of the speaker If I talk about a speaker, right? A speaker is a guardian guardian of the parliament of the Lok Sabha. Speaker is guardian of the Lok Sabha. His decision is final. you know his decision is final in the lok sabha and his interpretation his interpretation of constitution or a statute of the lok sabha is also final also final right he is a protector of the privileges of the privileges of the member of the parliament he protects the privileges of the member of the parliament right so i told you that the speaker is a guardian of the lok sabha speaker is a guardian of the lok sabha now let me tell you what is the other power of the lok sabha right now if you look at what a speaker does a speaker can alone decide whether a particular bill is a money bill or not right a speaker you know a speaker alone you know decides whether a particular bill whether a particular bill is money bill or not speaker is you know authority who can decide particular bill whether money bill or not but if you look at the aadhar judgment 2016 supreme court held that you know the speaker has authority to decide whether a particular bill is money bill or not but his decision can be reviewed by the court right in 2016 the supreme court in aadhar judgment
in other judgment held that in 2016 the supreme court in other judgment held that right the speaker can decide whether a particular bill bill is money bill or not but the speaker's decision is subject to judicial review is subject it's not object subject to judicial review it means now look at the here 2016 when the court has limited the power of the speaker anyway now if you look at you no know, a speaker can disqualify in case of defection its speaker can disqualify members in case of defection his decision shall be final but what happened in 1994 there is a one you know case called kihoto holhan case in that case supreme court again said that you know the you know question on disqualification in case of the faction speaker decision shall be final but his decision can be reviewed by the court right so if you look at the constitution constitution gives final authority to a speaker to decide about disqualification of the member of the lok sabha okay but but the supreme court in kihoto kihoto holhan case It was I think nineteen ninety four. In court of law case, Supreme Court in court of argued that no, the speaker has authority to decide. about disqualification of members in case of defection right kyoto hall in case mein kya kaha tha court ne the speaker has authority to decide about disqualification of members in case of defection but his decision is subject to subject to
judicial review. Now again, here you can see that the power of the speaker to decide disqualification. The question of disqualification in case of defaction was limited by the Supreme Court. <clears throat> anyway, so that is, if you look at third, a speaker presides joint sitting. Joint sitting. Now, you have to know that joint sitting is a Joint sitting is an extraordinary measure in the parliament. What is joint sitting? The speaker presides joint sitting, then what is joint sitting? What is joint sitting? Now, if you look at, if you see parliament, there is a Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha, and there is a president. So when Lok Sabha passes a bill, Raj Sabha passes a bill, and then bill goes to the president for the assent. Right? And president give assent, and then bill becomes an act. Right? So if Lok Sabha passes a bill, Raj Sabha passes the same bill and then President gives an act and his assent or her assent, then the bill becomes an act. But consider the Lok Sabha has passed the bill but Raj Sabha has rejected it or vice versa. The Raj Sabha has passed the bill but Lok Sabha has rejected it. Now, then law cannot be met. Then law cannot be met. Because for a law, a bill must be passed from Lok Sabha as well as for Raj Sabha and should get assent of the president. But this is dead law. Consider about the deadlock. So when Raj Sabha passes a bill, Lok Sabha rejected, or Lok Sabha passes a bill and Raj Sabha rejected, or Raj Sabha is silent on that bill, not speaking for a long period of time. It is called deadlock. It is called deadlock. So when deadlock occurs between Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha, in that case, there is a special measure called joint sitting, right? Whenever there is a deadlock, whenever there is a deadlock, between the Lok Sabha and the Raju Sabha. Whenever there is a deadlock between Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha, you know, the president can summon. The president can request for a joint sitting. President can do it. Joint sitting can request kar sakta hai. right? And there have been three times joint sitting, right? For example, post office bill, you know, was you know there was a deadlock between the Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha on post office bill, and there was a joint sitting. Similarly, on you know there is one law called Pota. Two thousand. Two, there's a deadlock between the Lok Sabha and Raj Sabha, and there was a joint sitting mechanism. So, since independence, since 1950, 
there has been three instances, only three instances when joint sitting has been held, right? And who presides the joint sitting? The speaker. Speaker presides. Joint sitting. Right? Let me move to a few questions and then we will move again. Right? Look at the question number this. Question number one. With reference to the composition of the parliament, consider the following statements. The Lok Sabha members are directly elected, correct? The Lok Sabha members are directly elected, correct? The Rasa Sabha members are elected indirectly, this is also correct? Rasa Sabha members are elected by the state assembly right now look at the proportional representation system is used to elect the members of the Raj Sabha. this is also correct so all statements are correct one two three and here you can see that in d you can find one two three so correct option should be d now let me move to the next question. Which one of the following statement is not correct about the electoral constituency of the Lok Sabha? We discussed electoral constituency and you can see the question. There is a uniformity in the representation between different states. Yeah, there is a uniformity. अगर यूएस अगर मान लीजिए बिहार में 10 लाख पे एक एमपी है तो हिमाचल में भी 10 लाख पॉपुलेशन पे एक एमपी होगा और तमिलनाडु में भी 10 लाख पॉपुलेशन पे एक एमपी होगा तो देयर शुड बी यूनिफॉर्मिटी इन द रिप्रेजेंटेशन बिटवीन डिफरेंट स्टेट्स एंड इवन विदिन द विदिन द स्टेट डिफरेंट स्टेट में भी यूनिफॉर्मिटी होगा डिफरेंट स्टेट में भी यूनिफॉर्मिटी होगा और विदिन स्टेट भी यूनिफॉर्मिटी होगा यानी अगर 10 लाख पे एक पॉपुलेशन है तो हर कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी 10 लाख के पॉपुलेशन पे ही होगा राइट इच कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी शैल बी बेस्ड ऑन पॉपुलेशन 10 लाख पॉपुलेशन फॉर एग्जांपल राइट तो डिलिमिटेशन यू नो देयर इज यूनिफॉर्मिटी इन द रिप्रेजेंटेशन बिटवीन डिफरेंट स्टेट्स इट इज करेक्ट डिलिमिटेशन कमीशन डिवाइड्स इलेक्टोरल कॉन्स्टिट्यूएंसी इट इज आल्सो करेक्ट आई डिस्कस्ड the limitation commission draws a boundary of the electoral constituency so the limitation commission actually you know draws and redraws the boundary of electoral constituency third you can see the size of the electoral constituency is based on territory and population the size of the electoral constituency is based on territory and population so population is correct but what about territory is it based on territory no electoral constituency never based on territory it is based on population alone then the lok sabha seats have been frozen permanently on population permanently on the population census to 1971 level no this is also wrong so there are two two statement it has been frozen permanently no permanently no it has frozen till 2026 on the population census to thoda sa yahan par ye bhi garbad hai so two statements are wrong c and d right so there's a formulation in that question now look at the question number 3 
consider the following statements look at the first st statements in the first lok sabha single largest party in the opposition was the swatantrata party in the first lok sabha single largest party in the opposition was swatantrata party no right the single largest party in opposition was left party right and that was praja socialist party in the lok sabha a leader of opposition was recognized for the first time in 1969 this is also correct you should know that leader of opposition was not recognized in indian parliament till 1969 why is it so why is it so because for leader of opposition you need 10% seats 10% seats of the total seats of the lok sabha and no party had secured 10% seats 10% of the total lok sabha seats till 1969 right so it was first time 1967 election when you know the large opposition party acquired 10% of the total seats even if you look talk about contemporary lok sabha there is no leader of opposition because the largest opposition party congress has no 10% of the total seats of the lok sabha theek hai right so currently there is no uh, there is no opposition party in the current parliament now look at the this one in the lok sabha if the party does not have a minimum of 75 members its leaders cannot be recognized as leader of opposition so if a party does not have a seven, minimum 75 numbers it seems you look at the you know what is the total strength 543 in the lok sabha so minimum number should be 55 and see that in the lok sabha if a party does not have minimum number of 75 members no 70 minimum number to hame itna hi chahiye hai na 75 chahiye to keval do step statement 2 are only correct statement 2 is only correct right now let me move to next question look at the question about a speaker question number 6 with reference to the speaker of the lok sabha consider the following statements the salary and allowance of the speaker are fixed by the parliament correct the decision of the speaker in case of disqualification under 10th schedule is not subject to judicial review it is subject to judicial review this is wrong the speaker can be removed by a resolution passed by the lok sabha by simple majority this is also wrong for the removal of the speaker you know there is a need to resolution there is a need to pass a resolution in that resolution majority must vote so that must be supported by the majority the speaker can be removed by resolution passed by the lok sabha with a special majority not simple majority special majority tabhi sahi hota now only if you look at one is correct b is correct right let me see the next portion look at the portion number 7 the president of india can summon a session of the parliament at such place and as he thinks or she thinks fit this is correct The Constitution of India provides for three sessions of the Parliament in a year, but it is not mandatory to conduct all three sessions. Look, the Constitution does not talk about sessions. There are three sessions. That is tradition. This is wrong. 
right this is wrong there is no minimum number of days that parliament is required to meet in india in 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 year right so yeah, parliament should meet uh, two days but there is no mention that there should be you know minimum number right so this is also incorrect so only one is correct right now look at the question number 8 the law made by the parliament can govern the whole or any part part of the territory of india all indian citizen living outside of india the autonomous district of assam with the consent of governor so if you look at law made by the parliament you know can be applicable to the whole or any part of territory of india all indian citizen living outside of india yes for example law related to you know visa law, law related to passport that could be applicable to all citizen indian citizen whether they are living in india or whether they are living abroad right there are many uh, you know uh, um, schemes of india schemes by the government that is also implemented internationally for example one stop center one stop center is a scheme of go indian government to protect women from sexual harassment right in case of sexual harassment and that is applicable right indian government implemented this scheme internationally right an autonomous district of assam with the consent of government yeah, this is also correct so 1 2 3 all are correct right so now again let me move to teach you something something right now let me talk about few idea like quorum what is quorum quorum is you know a minimum number required in the parliament to start business of the parliament to start debate discussion in the parliament quorum is business or debate or discussion in the parliament right now let me tell you tell you one thing whip what is whip so each party has its whip whip basically maintains discipline within the party each party appoints a whip who is responsible to maintain discipline in the party basically whip ye kehta hai ki acha आप हम लोगों को इस पार्टी को वोट देना है या इस बातों पे सरकार का समर्थन करना है या नहीं करना है राइट सो बेसिकली यू कैन से मोनिटर ऑफ द क्लास राइट मोनिटर ऑफ द क्लास दैट इज कॉल्ड वेट राइट देन देर इज वन टर्म कॉल्ड लीडर ऑफ द हाउस leader of the house who is the leader of the house basically you know in the lok sabha leader of the house is prime minister because he is a member of that house 
So PM is the leader of the house basically. PM is leader of the house in the Lok Sabha. If he is a member, he is member of the Alas. Consider PM is a member of the Rajya Sabha. Then who will be member of the, uh, who will be uh, leader of the house in the Lok Sabha? Any member appointed by the Prime Minister. PM is the leader of the house in the Lok Sabha if he is a member of the Lok Sabha. Otherwise, any member appointed by PM. Member Dinita basically ministers. Any minister appointed by the PM can become leader of the in the Lok Sabha. Leader of the house in the Lok Sabha. Leader of the house Kon Hutai Lok Sabha me? Prime Minister. For example, current parliament, Modi is the member of Modi, Narend Modi is uh, uh, is a member of the Lok Sabha, right? The our honorable prime minister is a member of the Lok Sabha and he's a leader of the house. Consider he would have been not member of the Lok Sabha, then he would have been member of the Rajya Sabha, then what would be happen? Then any ministers appointed by the prime minister would have been leader of the house. Consider, you know, UPA government. Consider UPA government. Manmohan Singh was, you know, from the Rajya Sabha. So he was not leader of the house in the Rajya Sabha. He was a uh, Lok Sabha. He was a leader of the house in the Rajya Sabha. And any minister could be the member of any minister appointed by the PM can could be member of the house of the Lok Sabha. Okay. So that is a leader of house. Here I will stop and tomorrow we will take up this all. Right? We know that parliament is a lengthy chapter and we will do it bit by bit, right? And comprehensively. See you tomorrow.